in the first part of lesson number 16, which was the last video, we looked at a random variable x that follows a binomial distribution with the number of trials n and the probability of success p has a PMF or a probability mass function p of x of little x being equal to n choose x times p to the power of x times 1 minus p to the power of n minus x for x ranging from 0 to n and of course you know that n choose x or n combination x is n factorial divided by x factorial times n minus x factorial. Most calculators have a key which is labeled NCR and that calculates n combination r or n combination x. In this lesson what we want to do is we want to show that the expected value of a binomial distribution, expected value of x, is equal to the number of trials n times p. Also we want to show that the variance of that random variable x is n times p times 1 minus p and the mgf mx of t is p times e to the power of t plus 1 minus p the whole expression to the power of n. That's the goal of this lesson to show this three uh, identities. Now to be able to do that we need to recall the binomial theorem binomial theorem from probably from your high school algebra from your algebra and a binomial theorem gives us a way to express a plus b to the power of n as a sum okay any number a plus any number b to the power of n can be expressed as the sum x ranging from 0 to n of n choose x times a to the power of x times b to the power of n minus x. That's the binomial theorem. First of all, let's find the moment generating function of the random variable x. I want to mention that this is just one way to prove the expectation, the variance, and the MGF. In fact, there is a much easier way of proving the expectation, the variance, and the MGF than what I'm going to do in this lesson. Now, the MGF of this random variable x, by definition, is the expected value of e to the power of t times x. And that is equal to the sum. Now, the support is 0 to n, so x ranging from 0 to n of e to the power of t times x times the PMF. And the PMF is n choose x, p to the power of x times 1 minus p to the power of n minus x. Okay, now I can write e to the power of tx as e to the t to the power of x. So what I have then is I can combine e to the tx with p to the power of x. And that gives me, let me pull out n choose x out here, the sum n choose x times p times e to the power of t. e to the power of t and p have the same power, which is x to the power of x times 1 minus p to the power of n minus x. Now this sum is from 0 to n. If you look at this carefully, you could actually let a be equal to p times e to the power of t and let b be equal to 1 minus p. Then you have the sum x equals 0 to n of n choose x times a to the power of x times b to the power of n minus x. And, but that is exactly what you have here in the binomial theorem. So this sum is simply equal to a plus b to the power of n. But what are our a and b? a is p times e to the power of t and b is 1 minus p. 1 minus p. The whole thing to the power of n. Therefore we have the expression for the moment generating function of a binomial distribution which is 
p times e to the t plus 1 minus p to the power of n. That's the MGF. Now, once you have the MGF, finding the expectation and the variance is straightforward because the expectation of x, which is the first moment, is the derivative with respect to t of the MGF of x and evaluate that derivative at t equals 0. So let's find that derivative and plug in 0 for t. So this is equal to the derivative of d by dt of that expression p times e to the t plus 1 minus p times 1 minus p to the power of n evaluated at t equals 0. Let's find the derivative now and that is by using the power rule again n times p times e to the power of t plus 1 minus p to the power of n minus 1 and times the derivative of the inside function times d by dt of the inside function which is p times e to the t plus 1 minus p and all this is evaluated at t equals 0 and that is equal to n times p times e to the power of t plus 1 minus p all this to the power of n minus 1 and take the derivative of that 1 minus p does not depend on t so the derivative of 1 minus p is 0 but the derivative of p times e to the t is p times e to the t now what we have to do next is plug in 0 for t when you plug in 0 uh, you get n times e to the power of 0 is 1 so I have p times 1 which is p plus 1 minus p to the power of n minus 1 times p times e to the power of 0 p times 1 which is p but you know p cancels out with p and I have 1 to the power of n minus 1 1 to the power of any number is 1 so this is equal to 1 so I have the expectation of the random variable x to be n times p Okay, so what we did here to find the expectation of the random variable x is to find the first derivative with respect to t of the moment generating function which is this right here and evaluate that first derivative at t equals 0 so we have that that's the derivative of the MGF with respect to t to find the variance the variance of the random variable x is equal to the expectation of x squared which is the second moment minus the first moment of x the whole squared and that is equal to the expectation of x squared minus we have the first moment np squared but using the MGF technique again the second moment of the random variable x is equal to the derivative with respect to t actually the second derivative with respect to t of the MGF evaluated at t equals 0 but the second derivative is the same as the derivative of the first derivative mx of t evaluated at t equals 0 but we have the first derivative here so what we need to do is now find the derivative of the first derivative which is n times p times e to the t plus 1 minus p to the power of n minus 1 times p times e to the t after finding that derivative we plug in 0 for t now the task at hand is to find this derivative okay, that's p you can view this as the product of two functions the first function in black and I have the second function here again in black in a small circle now these two functions are functions of t let's call the first one f of t and the second one g of t when you are taking the derivative of the product of two functions you utilize what's called the 
product rule, which is first take the derivative of the first function and multiply it by the second function, plus the first function multiplied by the derivative of the second function, g of t. All right, remember we have to plug in 0 for t. Now, the derivative of the first function is the derivative of n times p times e to the t plus 1 minus p to the power of n minus 1. Now, what I can do is I could take uh, the, this power down, so I have n times n minus 1, and subtract 1 from the power, so that it's p times e to the t plus 1 minus p to the power of n minus 2 times the derivative of the inside, that's the inside function by chain rule. So the derivative of the inside function is the derivative of p times e to the t plus the derivative of 1 minus p. 1 minus p is a constant with respect to t, therefore its derivative is 0. But p times e times p times e to the t has a derivative of p times e to the t. So that is the derivative of f of t. And I need to multiply it by g of t, but g of t is p times e to the t plus f of t, which is n times p times e to the t plus 1 minus p to the power of n minus 1 times the derivative of g. Now g is this small function, p times e to the t. The derivative of p times e to the t is again p times e to the t. And evaluate everything at t equals 0. We can now plug in 0 for t. Therefore we have n times n minus 1 times, now p times e to the power of 0 is p times 1, which is p. So everywhere we have p times e to the power of t, we plug in p. So that is p plus 1 minus p to the power of n minus 2 times p, again here, I have another one there again, times p plus n times, here again, p plus 1 minus p to the power of n minus 1, here again I plug in p. But this simplifies, because p cancels out negative p, here p cancels out negative p. So we have n times n minus 1 times 1 to the power of n minus 2, which is equal to 1. And here again, p times 1 minus p is 1. 1 to the power of n minus 1 is equal to 1. So this is 1 times p, which is p, multiplied by p plus n times p. So that is equal to n times n minus 1 times p square plus n times p. Remember, that is the second moment. What we need to find is the variance, which is the second moment minus the first moment squared. And the first moment is n times p. So that is n times n minus 1 times p squared plus np minus n times p squared. This is equal to n squared minus n times p squared plus n times p minus n times p quantity squared. You can further simplify this as n squared p squared minus n times p squared plus n times p minus n times p the whole squared. Now this cancels n squared p squared. So we have, let me write the positive term first. That is n times p minus n times p squared. What is common to these two values is n times p. And I'll be left with 1 minus p. Therefore, the variance of a binomial random variable x is equal to the number of trials times the probability of success times 1 minus p, which is the probability of failure.